All right, welcome to Unit 8. This uh, unit's called Reactions. For those of y'all at home, pause the video and uh, get this copied. Um, also, for those of y'all at home, they've been handed a packet that you'll want to get your hands on. It's for the entire unit, um, but I will be referring to it a little bit today. So have the packet handy. It'll help you out. All right. Um, our unit's titled Reactions, and it's nice to finally get to this stage because you have to go through a ton of chemistry to get to the point where you can actually start studying chemical reactions, which is where you want to be. So. Um, if you look at the, um, if you look at the screen, you can see the uh, reaction up there that you are, um, you've probably seen on my whiteboard, like from my AP classes and stuff. But we are finally getting to the point where we get to analyze these reactions in a large variety of ways. So the basic anatomy is a good place to start. In a reaction, you always have stuff that you start with and stuff that you end with. And the vocab for those items are the reactants, which in this example, there's two of them. But there could be one of them or there could be 80 of them. And on this side of that arrow are the products, the stuff that you end with. In this example, there's only one type of substance you end with, but there could be 90. Just depends on the reaction. Now, the arrow is what separates the reactants from the products, but we've got a good name for it. Try to not call it the arrow, all right? That thing that gets us through the reaction is called a yield sign. Good vocab there. You already know what subscripts are from all of your nomenclature studies. Coefficients are new for you, but we're not doing those today. We're, we'll do those tomorrow. Next lecture. Now, before we go into all the fun ways that we can do reactions, um, it makes sense to um, show you these parts of a reaction. So we can do that. Um, let's do some pre-observations, though, of what I have here. All right, so just take some mental notes on what you see. Hold your hand out flat. Explain to them what you feel. Besides being pushed, what do you feel? All right, glass, what do you feel? What's your opinion of the temperature of the glass? Chilly. All right, it's, it's room temperature. I didn't do anything to it, but as glass lives, uh, it tends to be a little chillier. So, yeah, I just put it on his hand. He said it feels kind of cool. All right, so that's the temperature of it right now. And this will be one of my reactants. I have another reactor. Again, take some observational mental notes on what you're looking at. All right, put your hand on the clap. What do you feel temperature-wise? Same thing, all right? Again, he said cold. It's cool because it's glass. They're both room temperature is the idea. So what I'm going to do is take my two reactants and see if we can force a reaction and make products. Now, just because you mix two things together doesn't mean there'll be a reaction. Uh, but let's see if we can make one happen. I'm going to set it down so I don't get this on me. I'll pick it right back up. Don't worry. For those of y'all at home, this is going to be a bit diminished in the video because while I love you, I care more about them right now, and I'm going to be walking around the room. So you're going to miss part of the next part, but uh, I'm sorry. You're, you're just so unimportant. Now, take a look. What is the very first thing that you notice has happened? All right, so right away, my color is quite a bit different. And you probably would have said the first color you saw was what? Yellow. But now what do you see? Yeah, suddenly it's just getting uglier and uglier and uglier. Now, hold your hand out flat. Everybody hold your hand out flat. I have to do this quickly. All right? And just push up against me. As I come, push your hand up gently against my hand. All right? <laughs> I 
All right. So I went by, look at it now, people at home, and I put their hand. What'd you feel? Warm. 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 It was cool a moment ago. But suddenly it's warm. And now watch for another moment. We'll see if my timing's amazing. And what? Now, you know that warmth you felt? It's spreading. And it's getting a little ridiculous. What? What is that? How would you describe what's happening there? A gas, yeah, and now it doesn't smell very nice. So, <laughs> so that I'm going to bring it back out and show it to you in a minute. That glass is, I mean, it will give you second degree burns. It's getting so hot right now. Um, so remind me, Rami, what was the very first thing that we saw happen when the reaction started? Right away, we saw the color change. What was the second thing that you saw happen? Well, you didn't see it, but yeah, the temperature. Then you noticed the temperature change. What was the third thing that started happening? Boom, that gas, which is actually, um, yeah, yeah, stinky. Um, it's a form of uh, sulfur um, is being given off. And now, if you want to take a look at Final product. If you look at what's in there, we have formed the food monster. Is what he's called. You cannot touch it. Burn and hurt. <laughs> <laughs> We have formed a new solid known as the poop monster. And what I want you to do is in your notes here where it says precipitate, I want you to put in parentheses new solid. The definition of a precipitate is a new solid. Oh, so we can't go on that way again. Sorry, I've been around a lot longer. It's not going to hurt you. Now, those signs of a chemical reaction, for a chemical reaction to happen, you don't have to have all four of them. You just need one of them. The reason the poop monster is a really good demo for you is that it has all four of them. So when you run into my test in a few weeks and you have to identify signs that a chemical reaction has taken place, <clears throat> think back to what you just saw because they're all there, all right? But for a chemical reaction to take place, when you mix two things together, you just need one of those four to happen. Yeah, that was sugar and sulfuric acid. Huh. Okay, so that's what a reaction is. Here's what our goal is in the unit. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to turn an English sentence into one of those reactions that's on the slides, all right? It's called translating and it's kind of boring. Tomorrow, we're going to further analyze those reactions by balancing it. More on that later. But then the, the three lectures after that are the more interesting ones where we're going to look at types of reactions. You're going to be able to predict products, which is a really cool worldwide skill to have. Because if you can learn it and remember it, um, you'll have a skill that very a very low percentage of humanity has. To be able to look at two reactants and know what will form if you mix them together. But before we get to the cool stuff, we have to translate first. So I want you to look at the packets that I gave you. And look at the very front of it. Now, you need this packet for the entire unit. Do not lose it. I hate printing these kinds of thick things, especially if you're going to be um, irresponsible. So, now we're only on the very front today for the most part. Um, you'll notice I gave you a polyatomic um, a short list. And then this top section up here, I'm going to be referring to it. It's got some hot words that we're going to use while translating. Um, there's a periodic table on the back so that you can do some easy flipping around. 
let's take a look at today's skill. Do me a favor and copy down that sentence. We're going to translate four sentences today. So that's 25% of our work up there. Our job is to turn that sentence into a reaction yields products equation. And I want to show you the um, steps to not mess this up. Now, nomenclature is key today. So really, this unit is a culmination of a lot of your past skills. So if you find weaknesses, let me link you to other videos because got to be good at some of the past stuff. Here's how this works. When you look at this sentence, every time you see a word, sometimes a phrase, it tells you to write something. Now, if you're wondering, well, what do you mean sometimes a phrase? Well, if you look at the top part of that packet, the little wordy part above the polyatomic, you'll see a section that tells you when to put plus signs and when to put arrows, yields. All right. So be glancing back at that and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about as we go. Here we go, I'll do the first one for you. Every time I see a word, sometimes phrase, I write something. Lithium. Li. Reacts with. Anybody? What does reacts with mean I should draw? Plus. It's a plus because our paper says so. Reacts with. Nitrogen. Nitrogen. To produce, what should I do for arrow. to produce? I don't call it an arrow, a yield sign. Because your packet says so. Lithium. Now, do you see how there's nothing between lithium and nitrite in the sentence? Therefore, there should be nothing between lithium and nitrogen in what I'm writing, right? There was words in between this, but there's not words in between this. So if the sentence shoves the words together, you do too. It's making a compound. Plus, then it's ending in nitride, which is a bonded nitrogen, as you've already learned. Now, we're not done. This is two phases. That was phase one, write what you see. Phase two is check what you wrote. Now, I've got this up here, but you already wrote it. It was on the first slide. It said, whenever you write a compound, check the nomenclature. Whenever you have a free element, check diatomics, Brinkelhoff. All right? So watch what I mean by that. See the lithium right there? See how he's all by himself? There's no other capital letters. That is a free element if it's unbonded. So what do we do for free elements? Well, we check Brinkelhoff. Is lithium diatomic? Nope. Leave it alone. Thank you for being here, Landon. That's Landon, by the way. Anyway, moving to the next substance. We, we just check each substance individually. Here we go. Free element. All by himself, right? For free elements, we check diatomics. Is nitrogen a part of Brinkelhoff? Yes. And if it is, you drop a deuce. So many poop jokes today. Kind of smells bad, too. Man, we're having a day. This is not a free element, right? It's a compound, multiple capital letters put together, however you have to think about it. But anytime it's a compound, we don't care about diatomics. We check nomenclature. And what I mean by that is if your compound is a metal with a nonmetal, then you need to do charges and crisscross. If it's a nonmetal with a nonmetal covalent, then there would be prefixes to worry about. Lithium is metal, nitrogen's non-metal, so check the charges. So you can flip to the back of your packet if you need to, label your oxidation states if you need to, but when you do, you'll see that lithium is plus one, 
and nitrogen is minus three. They won't reduce, so cross them as is. The one goes to the nitrogen, the three goes there, and boom, we're done. Please copy down the next sentence. Copying down the sentences is important so that your notes are actually studyable. Otherwise, you just have floating answers. Up, so, huh? I'll be on the video. Who's a puppet dog? All right, hey, let's do this one together also. Make sure that we're okay in the groove. Every time I see something, I write something. Check it out. Um, hey, group uh, cluster one, lead. What's the symbol for lead, any of you? PB, lead is PB. Now, there's a Roman numeral two there, which is absolutely important, but because of the way I teach this, it's not important yet. I need to write everything and then go back and check everything. My hope though, is that as you get better at this, you can do it all in one phase. You can write it and fix it as you go. That's faster, it's just not the best way to teach it. So, let us PB, we'll get back to the Roman numeral two. Hey, cluster two, what should I write for sulfate, any of you? SO4, beautiful, PB, SO4. Yes, he has a charge, but I don't need it yet. Hey, cluster three, what should I draw for the word yields? An arrow, and yield sign. So check it out. This one only has one reactant. All right. It yields lead. Again, a Roman numeral that we'll worry about in a moment. Hey, cluster four, what's sulfite? SO3. Hey, cluster five and six, and plus, don't skip any important words, and then finally it says oxygen. Any questions so far? Now go back, check what you wrote. Here we go. My first substance is a compound. For the compounds, I check the nomenclature. There is a polyatomic bonding, which if you remember, because you've learned it, that makes it ionic. So check charges. The charges here are plus two from the Roman numeral and minus two from your polyatomic sheet. So what happens? They reduce to ones and nothing happens. So we could have gotten away without checking him, but check him. The same thing happens here, Roman numeral two, sulfites negative two, plus two, minus two, no cross. The final substance is a free element. So we ask a different question. Is oxygen diatomic? And the answer is, he is a part of rainbow. And now we're done. How you can remember lead, Aubrey taught me, like peanut butter and bread, like peanut butter and jelly. So PB and lead, like bread. Now I have to make a new video because I was so stupid. No, I'm just kidding. That was great. Uh, it worked. All my yeah, it had all the elements. Aubrey's little memorization <laughs> thing went crazy. <laughs> Little side note, especially if you're watching this and you're not one of my students and you're like, but wait, isn't there more stuff you have to do? 
There is, I'm just not teaching it today. But hey, look, how many oxygens are there on the reactant side? There's four. How many oxygens are there on the product side? There's five. There's three there and two there. There's five. Now, you can't do that, all right? Well, the only way you can have four on one side and five on the other is if you're a god. So I can do it. Y'all can't do it, all right? You can take my god class when you're a senior. Um, we, we have to balance the reaction, it's called, but that's a tomorrow thing, so we're not there yet. But more on that later. Let's draw some cards on the next one, yeah? Copy down our third sentence. Dicarbon tetrabromide produces gaseous carbon and liquid bromine. This sounds exciting. Let's get some help. Not from you. Okay. Let's go over to cluster one and talk to C4. Hey, one, four. What element do you see in the first word? What element? And what's the symbol for carbon? Peter. All right. Now, some of you look at that word dicarbon and you're like, we need to do other stuff. But yeah, but because of the way I'm teaching it, I would go back and fix that part. So whatever. I hope you can do it all in one step. Um, all right. Let's go over to cluster four and talk to C5. Hey, four, five. What element do you see in the second word? Bromine, right? Bromide is the bonded form of bromine. We good? All right, let's go over to cluster three. Talk to C2. Hey, three, two. The uh, word produces. What should I draw? Yield. Produces. All right. Now, before we move on, I want to show you something. In your packet, flip back a page and you'll find this. In your packet, flip back one page and you'll find this. And then on the other, on the back of that page, you'll find more. On the back of that page, you'll find more. These are other fun symbols that can go into our reactions. So have that information handy as we continue translating this problem. It says produces gaseous Carbon. So the next thing it produces is carbon. But can anybody tell me how I can show it's gaseous? Parentheses G. Produces gaseous carbon. All right. Then there's the word and, which is a plus sign. Liquid bromine. Wait, I, yeah, so the, the, there's a thing that says gaseous products are formed, but that would be shown right there. Okay. All right, but we, we'll actually never use that symbol. Okay. So, because uh, this is the, the more standard way to show it. Anyway, um, how do I show that the bromine is liquid? Uh, yeah, with an L. I like to use a cursive L so you don't mistake it for uh, one. But check it out. I showed the states of matter using your Now go back and check what you wrote. Here we go. Compound. If it's a compound, I check nomenclature. This is a non-metal to a non-metal, so it's covalent. No charges then. Prefixes, which you already noticed, right? 
So let's go talk to someone. Let's go over to cluster four again and talk to seat five again. Hey, four, five, what is the prefix? What number is di? Di is two. And then anybody, what number is tetra? Remember, there's no crisscross or reduction in covalent. If you've forgotten that, you need to come work with me. Both of the products are free elements. Free elements, we don't look at nomenclature at all. We look only at Brinkelhoff. Are either of them Brinkelhoff? Yeah, are. One of them is. <coughs> Boom. What do y'all think of translation? Yeah. You determined Brinkelhoff on the slide before this? You, you wrote it down here. It's, The diatomics, that's it, right there. Bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, four. Those are the only seven that automatically get twos. The other hundred and whatever don't. Because in nature, those seven are incapable of existing by themselves. If they do, it forms a free radical, which is really bad for the environment. All right, y'all, prove that you can do it then. Here's our last example of the day. I'll give you a few minutes. Write down the sentence or the work is useless.
All right. If I do something that you uh, don't understand or you disagree with, just stop me. Here we go. The word magnesium is MG. The word and is a plus sign. The word potassium is K. Oxide comes right after potassium. Therefore, it comes right after my symbol. Are heated to forms kind of a mouthful. We know that to form is definitely the arrow. How did you show that it was heated? Yeah, or the word heat. But yeah, I prefer the triangle. But whatever. It's okay if you miss that part. Through practice, you're going to get really good at this. What does it produce? Or it forms potassium, K, and plus magnesium oxide magnesium oxide. Check what you wrote. Free element, free element is a diatomic? No, leave it alone. Compound, compound, nomenclature. Let's see what it is. Metal, Bonded to non-metal, so it's ionic. Check charges. Potassium is plus one. Oxygen is minus two. You do need to cross them. You just hit her. <laughs> free element, free element. Brinkelhoff, nope. Leave it alone. Compound, compound, nomenclature, it's ionic, it's a metal to a non-metal, so check charges. Magnesium is plus two, oxygen is minus two. Are there any questions? We will balance this tomorrow.